Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. Yes, I'm still a little bit sick. Deal with it, I am. <laughs> so this is a car we shot a little over a year ago, 67 Fastback Mustang. We rarely ever reshoot a car, but I felt this one deserved it because suspension's been dealt with a little bit on this. They, they did cut into the shock towers. Rods and Customs did some front control arms on here, two-way adjustable shocks, sway bar. In rear, it is still wearing leaf springs, uh, which I would love to see change somewhere along the way. But it does have two-way adjustable shocks in the rear as well. The motor trans and rear end are from a 2014 Mustang. If you watch the previous video, you'll see me and Kyle driving together and we were really enjoying it. The car sounds great, pulls pretty good. It didn't seem like what it should be, but at the same time, just kind of, you know, it's a client's car. So I, I drove it pretty easy overall. But recently I picked up the car to get a couple of little paint and body things done on it. And when I picked it up from the client's house at about 4,200 RPMs, the car was stumbling badly. I mean, it felt like it was starving for fuel. So I took it over to my friends, Henry and Nico at Vintage Motor Works recently. Here's what happened and it's dramatic because this car is now making almost double the horsepower it was making when we shot it a little over a year ago. This car should be making, as I said in the previous video, mid 400s. They went to dyno with it and it was making 232 whopping horsepower at the rear wheel. A complete joke for what this motor is. So being the methodical guys they are, they dug in. First thing was to change the wideband sensors. They changed all eight plugs, but what they were finding was it was running in a lean condition on the passenger side only. Driver side was fine, but the passenger side four cylinders was super lean. So after changing plugs and wideband sensors, they went back to dyno and they were still having the same issue, running lean on the right side. So got to credit Henry and Nico over at Vintage Motorworks for doing what they did. They pulled the wideband sensors again. One of them straight from Ford was a faulty wideband sensor. So they went back to Ford, got a new one, replaced that. Bam, all of a sudden the car came to life. They put it on the dyno, tuned it. Now we've got a whole new car here. From 232 horsepower at the rear wheel, like I said, joke, to now making 437 horsepower at the rear wheel and just shy of 400 foot pounds of torque. If you want to see the dyno, I actually have it and we'll show you a little shot of that. So any of you that are questioning true or not true, we got proof from the dyno report. So it's really dramatically changed the car. I mean, it sounds like a different car. As you can imagine, it's driving like a complete different animal. Now, as far as the rest of it, I'll just give you a quick rundown. And if you want real specific details, you can go check out the previous episode on this car. It's got a Borla, Borla mufflers on the back, making a really nice tone. It is catless because it's a 67 Mustang, man, right? I mean, even though it is a modern motor in it, as we all know, it's just a 67 Mustang. As you guys know, any of you that follow the channel, we deal with a lot of really high-end resto mod and pro touring cars that are ground up builds from the chassis to everything else, radical fabrication, all that stuff. You, any of you that follow the channel, you know what I'm talking about. This car's not that. That's not what the owner of this car wanted. He wanted a car that still looked and acted overall like a 67 Mustang with considerably more power, a lot more reliability, overall, just a much more enjoyable car. And I think he nailed it on every aspect. I love the wheels that he chose on here. Some of the other things I absolutely love, let's go over and check out the interior. Dude. Again, like I said, he wanted to keep this car looking like a 67 Mustang, which I absolutely love. I think he did a perfect blend of old and new on this car specifically here in the interior. You recovered the seats, you've got Alcantara mixed with leather, beautiful. I know a lot of people gripe about low back seats. Retaining the original look, I love the way it looks in here. Yes, I prefer a higher back seat for the protection, but in a car like this, I just don't think it's needed. This car's not getting tracked, it's not getting driven hard. This is a car that the owner really enjoys to just simply drive. Just truly a beautiful car that we are going to go have a little fun with and drive it around the area and just show you what a difference it is from the previous time we shot this to what the car is now.
Kyle, I wish you were here today, buddy, because as much as we liked this before, it is a completely different car. I mean, it's really a different car. Think about it, you guys, from 232 horsepower at the rear wheels to now 437. It's, I mean, it is just a different car. And I love the balance of this. I love that it's, it still feels very much, there's elements that still feel old school Mustang. The suspension, although it has been upgraded, it's not as dramatic as like a four link rear or something like that. So it, it still has elements about it that feel like old Mustang, but not. One of my favorite things I gotta admit on this car Although it did go to a bigger brake package on it, the car originally had, uh, when he did the upgrades to it, it had Willwoods, but the Willwoods were just two piston brakes. Definitely not enough to stop this car, especially what it's doing now, but it's manual brakes. And anybody that's ever driven manual brakes, I think you'll agree with me that the thing that's wonderful about it is it has so much more touch. You can. You can finesse the brakes, lightly brake, or you can dig deep into them. Now, this car has bare brakes all around, four pistons, plenty of stopping power. The tones it makes are just beautiful. I mean, I absolutely love the tones. I mean, listen to that thing. Ah! just a completely different car, I'm telling you. All right, you guys, that is it for our revisit, our reshoot of this wonderful, wonderful 67 Fastback. Perfect blend of old and new, in my opinion. The car looks stunning, no body mods. The paint color is just the right color for this car. The wheel and tire combo, the way it sits, not too low, not too high. The drivability of it, the power, the brakes, everything about this car for my taste, for my skill set as a driver, this is such a perfect, enjoyable car to go street drive, have fun, and look like a badass. So as always, I say thanks for hanging and watching and supporting what we do. I really do appreciate it, you guys, and I will see you in the next episode. All right, man, later. <laughs>